giant trevally is arguably one of the toughest fish in the world. They are aggressive apex predators that possess extremely muscled bodies and a very powerful tail. Giant trevally are capable of impressive bursts of speed and have jaws that are able to grip and crush large prey with ease. Capable of living in a wide variety of marine environments, the ideal habitat for large giant trevally is on the edge of tropical coral reefs. The zone where the coral reef drops away into the depths is inhabited by a huge array of marine species that live and forage for food around the reef. The reef offers a source of protection from predators, but unwary prey that stray too far from cover will be pounced on in a lightning fast ambush style attack or driven to the surface where they become easy targets. One of the giant trevally's favourite prey is the fusilier. There are quite a few species of fusilier that are found in large schools along the reef zone. The giant trevally is also an opportunistic feeder that will eat squid, cuttlefish and even lobster from the reef. It's not unusual to find giant trevally swimming with other large predators such as sharks, where they will clean up any scraps of food after a kill, sometimes even bumping the sharks out of the way. The giant trevally has few enemies, with the exception of large sharks and the giant cod that inhabit the reef, which can grow to an excess of 500 kilos. To anglers, the giant trevally offers one of the greatest sporting challenges. The ultimate way to fish for giant trevally is by casting large surface lures into the reef zone and retrieve them with an erratic action that makes them look like a distressed baitfish. Long, powerful casting rods and reels filled with 50 kilo breaking strain line are used to cast the surface lures. The surface lures are specifically designed to represent different sorts of prey and are fitted with super strong split rings and hooks that can stand a crushing bite from a giant trevally. surface lures are so popular with anglers is that they will entice the giant trevally to the surface where they will attack the lure with a huge amount of aggression. The sight and feeling of this experience to an angler could only be described as the moment of impact. Once hooked, giant trevally are capable of scorching runs that will burn out the drags on reels. They will attempt to cut lines off on sharp coral and can snap powerful fishing rods like twigs as they fight with the anglers all the way to the boat. Join us on an adventure to chase the fish that can break your tackle, leave you bruised and embarrassed, and that we anglers simply call GTs. An adventure to remote and exciting places often takes you to some beautiful spots. To get to our destination, we first had to travel to Hamilton Island off the coast of Queensland, Australia. This is a beautiful holiday destination with a warm tropical climate, white sand beaches and luxurious accommodation. We took full advantage of all the many activities on offer at Hamilton Island and enjoyed going from place to place on the ever-present golf buggies. Before we knew it, we were on board the seaplane, heading way out to the Great Barrier Reef. 
flying out into the Coral Sea by seaplane was a great adventure in its own right. The flight would take us around 150 k's out into the barrier reef over some spectacular scenery where we would meet up with our 80 foot mothership, the Odyssey, that is run by Nomad Sport Fishing Adventures who are specialists in fishing for giant trevally. GTs are widely distributed through the Indo-Pacific region and there are many areas that claim to have the best GT fishing. One of the greatest would have to be Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Seeing the Great Barrier Reef from the air, you could see the maze of complex reef with strong currents pushing through the channels. It's easy to understand why this environment is so rich in sea life. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven wonders of the natural world and is made up of over 3,000 individual reef systems. Not only is the Great Barrier Reef a great spectacle of the modern world, it is also host to the most diverse marine environment with over 1,500 species of fish and excess of 10,000 species of coral, mollusk, turtle, whales and birds, making it the richest and most diverse ecosystem on the planet. to meet up with Odyssey at an area known as Elusive Reef. The isolation of this area, even though only 150 kilometres from land, really started to sink in as we landed. As the crew were unpacking the seaplane, Brett, the chef on board the Odyssey, gave us a taste of the sort of fishing we were going to be experiencing as he hauled in a 20-odd kilo GT at the back of the boat. Oh, I'm bringing back this way! This was going to be a week to remember. On the first morning, the crew briefed the team on some GT fishing tactics. Alrighty guys, just got a small selection of lures that would be perfect for a trip out with us or any real um, adventure chasing GTs. We've got the big cut face popper, which is really good um, when the fish are a bit quiet down on a deep edge or something, you can really call them up with a big blooping action. And we've got the this one, which is a, you can work either like a big blooping popper or you can work it a bit faster, retrieve, skipping across the top which looks like a scared garfish. Next one we've got the Sabeel stick shad. It's a sinking stick bait. It's really good when you cast in amongst this patch of fusiliers. Let it sink down, give a few twitches, and it's usually game on. The next one's a favorite of ours, the 
Gobi. Skipping lure across the top, really easy to work. Cast it out, wind it back as fast as you can pretty much, and the fish go nuts over it. And they're actually quite an easy lure to hook fish on because the lure's not dancing from side to side, just constant retrieve. Out here on Nomad Charters, we've uh, gone through a series of knots and hooks and all sorts of tackle alike, and this is the knot we've found out that works best for us. It's called an FG knot, and uh, it works really well for tying braid onto very heavy mono, single strand mono leader. We use anything from uh, 130 pound up to 250 pound, and uh, braid sort of 100 pound to 130. So here we go, I'll show you the knot. Okay, we make a loop in the braid like that. There's a various, couple different ways to tie it. This is probably the easiest way. Make a loop like that, put the mono underneath the loop, and you simply plait the mono around the two strands of braid. So it's under, over, under, over. I'll do it nice and slow so you can see what's happening. So it's, just keep going on. Once plaited around the leader, the braid is wetted and then drawn up tight. Then a series of half hitches is tied around the main line and the leader to finish the knot. The tag end of the mono is carefully burnt with the lighter to finish the knot tidily. The FG knot is quite intricate, but perfect because it will run over the guides without catching when casting heavy lures, and can handle the stress of GT fishing. Once we had our safety briefing, the team of nine anglers were split up into various sport fishing boats, and we headed off for our first session, GT fishing. Before long I was casting into basically uncharted waters that had a very primal feel to them. Dicky do his job. Trace. There's not. It's a jobby. No, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Oh, quick, it's showing me. Oh, big red bass. Big red bass. Whew. What a beaut. Oh, it's a beast. And that's not even a GT. <laughs> Well, this is a fish maybe 10 kilos. I was expecting to see something about four times the size. Beautiful red colored fish lives in that reef zone. I'm getting scared about a big GT now. We didn't have to wait long for our next bit of action. In fact, it was only about three casts when my fishing partner for the day, Neville, hooked up. This fish was giving Nev a pretty hard time, but he managed to get it away from the reef with the help of some good boat skills by Chris, the crew member. It's a nice fish. Good work. 
That's all right. Come on, you beauty. Nev soon had the fish under control. It was the first GT of the trip, and it was a beauty. catching a good boar. <laughs> uh, catch another one. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> hey, that's not that easy. They're hard fish, aren't they? They are worth every ounce of, you of energy. A, have you ever had a tougher battle? No, no. Or, yeah, probably on a, on a big, big bluefin. A big bluefin. But that's all. Oh. It wouldn't be anything else. <laughs> good on you. Yeah. Well, even on wilderness places like the Great Barrier Reef, Sometimes you've got to work a bit for your fish, you know, the tide changes, current changes, and we've had a quiet half an hour or so. But we've just kept plugging away, putting in good casts. We've been going over a lot of bait fish, which is a really good sign, because that's what the GTs are hunting. And uh, our patient casting has been rewarded. Oh, he's a big boy. Yeah, there's a fish at the back of the boat. After the morning bite and a few missed strikes, things went a bit quiet, so we moved to a new patch of reef looking for action, and I was rewarded with a strike almost instantly. Launch for that one. That was a classic GT strike. I got about two wines on the reel, one pop in it, just the water just erupted around my lure. Fantastic. Came off the reef pretty too. Ooh, he said. We're fishing 80 and 100 pound line, which in most fishing situations would be restricted for marlin and fish like that. But these fish and the conditions that you're fishing them in, it's the only way to stop them. Anything lighter and you just get smashed. The sight of the fish in the water was very welcome as I was puffing hard and my arms were aching. All the crew on Nomad use lip grip tools to land GTs. This has proven very effective for releasing fish unharmed and also protects the crew from any hooks that fly around when angry fish shake their heads. Elusive reef GTs. This one's probably only about 15 kilos, but man, they just can pull so hard. Unbelievable. Just built for speed. The tail, have a look at the thickness of the tail. That's what gives them all that power. I'll put this one back in now. Keep him out of the water as long as short as possible. Here you go, fella. Come a bit of a launch. Congratulations. Thanks, right? <laughs> yeah, very well done. I need a little rest now. <laughs> It was day two of the trip and I was out with the birthday boy of our team, Mel. Some of the other guys had played a bit of a practical joke on him. One banana sandwich when you're out fishing. If you're in Brazil it wouldn't matter, but in New Zealand or Australia, it's not a good idea. Cheers. But I was told to give that to you. 
Hopefully the banana sandwich wouldn't affect our fishing. Anyway, the conditions were absolutely beautiful and there were tons of fusiliers showing. Keep that line tight, that's it. Good work. Mel the birthday boy was soon hooked up onto a fish that was heading towards the horizon. This was a hard running fish and Chris the Dickie had to increase the drag on the reel to try and slow it down. That fish took an amazing amount of line against a very hard drag. 